is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, there we go. All right, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. That is Omar Kelly in the South Florida Sun Sentinel. And, of course, our EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report. What shirt is that? That's a cool-looking cool shirt. Is that a soccer shirt? It is a soccer shirt. Parisa. Okay. Nice. Very nice. All right, you just wore it because it looks slick. That's all it is, not because you really follow the team or anything. Uh, I, I, I would be lying to you if I told you I followed uh, soccer because I don't. <laughs> uh, all right, oh, so uh, a day after or hours after the uh, mess uh, in Buffalo, what have you learned? They're not a very good team. Not that I expected them to be Buffalo, but no. um, I, I'm I'm thinking about uh, foundationally what are the building blocks of this team. Like, clearly you're not in Buffalo's league. That's not really a surprise. You haven't been competitive with them for a while, even though this team is probably supposed to be built to beat Buffalo. Um, but if you look at this team, offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, um, and maybe maybe the secondary, running back, wide receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks. What is salvageable? What is something that you can build on? And probably the only thing that's really buildable is the secondary. Um, Holland, Howard, Byron Jones, and you know, now Peter King saying Xavier Howard, expect the Dolphins to feel called for Xavier Howard. Oh, please, please trade him already. Please trade him. Please trade him. God, please trade him. Yeah, so you can draft no and, 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 But in the, in, in the end, that's not a guy you build around anyways because he's already up there in years. He wants more money. He's got a bad knee. So it, it's a ticking time bomb as it is. So you're you're probably better off. Because of not just because of, you know, the money, but all the other issues and where you're at as a team, that's not really a guy you want to build on anyway. So he's probably a guy you should move. I'm sure he's fine with it. <laughs> like like Christian Wilkins would be a guy Who? is what you're talking about. Christian Wilkins would be a guy that I would, you know. But the problem I have with your question nah. is that I can't really make an assessment on the talent because it's so poorly coached, I don't think we really know how good some of these players can be. And because it's so poorly coached, everybody pretty much looks bad. I think that's really my, at least for me, that's the way I see it. I would say, I'm, I'm not even Christian Wilkins, like his fifth year option is coming up this offseason. I'm, man. I think he's done, I think he's done a, a good job, dude. I think he's developed into a good player. I don't mind keeping him. He's one of the guys that's actually kind of performed through the garbage that they have here on their coaching staff. And that's, you know, that's a, even even the, uh, the 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 young safety. I kind of like him, too. He's actually shown me something. Who, Holland? You know, and Brandon yeah. Harris. Yeah. No, Holland. Holland. I like yeah, Jones, yeah. too. I like Jones, too. But uh, to a lesser extent, Holland, I really like. I think he, there's something there. It's just, again, with these idiots, I don't know if you'll ever see the best of him. That's my problem with all of this. Yeah. Um, I, as I wrote in, in, in my Sun Sentinel column, I mean, it's a bad roster. Poorly yeah, I saw it. I read it. That's, that's not executing. I mean, it's it's a recipe for disaster. You're a bottom four team in this league, um, which, you know, I, I, I thought about it, and I've been dabbling in this question. Um, you know, is this team a better team than the one that Brian Flores inherited and Chris Greer no. took the power of? And, and no. three no. years later, the answer is no. And no. if the answer is no, then you absolutely unequivocally failed this organization. And yeah, that's, no, that's right, now, right now, that's the only way to look at it. 
It's the only way to look at it right now. You're a yep. thousand percent right. I mean, uh, now the, if if that's what we, you know, the the biggest the biggest mystery and thing that that has me thinking, like has my wheels churning, is what's with the forty five minute session with Chris Greer and uh, uh, with um. Chris Greer and Steve Ross after the game. If you're Brian Flores, like you now, I know this is a pivotal point. All right, uh, he didn't mean with them, dude. He told you he was just thinking. No, no, no. He says he meets with them after every game. Like I'm not, I'm not naive. No, no. In that press conference, he said, "I, I just sat there to to think." That's what he said. He didn't. All he ever said about Ross and Greer is. You know, when I meet with them, that'll be all private. But he said he sat in his no, office, or whatever the hell it is, to to just contemplate and think and all that. And I don't know, bro. That dude better take up some yoga and some. Uh, I, I was I was born. Yes, I was born yesterday. I mean, I was born. What what's the saying? Like, I wasn't born yesterday. Yeah, I wasn't born yesterday. I'm I'm not fucking I'm not an idiot. I I I I, I wasn't born yesterday. Like I got you. You were you you were contemplating. You know, everybody's all in the same room because clearly Ross isn't flying back to Miami sitting sitting in in, in these jokers' offices. Yeah, um, right. they're all in person. Ross has been pissed for quite a while. This is embarrassing. You are poorly co like the one thing that we can say about Flores' team, and, and, and let's be completely transparent about this. They suck. No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's, he's never been completely out coached. He's out coached some very good coaches. He just has never been just completely like just embarrassed by coaching uh, a coaching performance. And it's, that, this year, yes. This yeah, that's what we're seeing this year, and I think this game probably is, is, or this opponent is probably the worst of the of it all. Um, and you have to contemplate, like, where do we go from here? What direction? And and we all know what Tuesday is. Tuesday by four p.m. Like, set an alarm. Like, you know, how much are how much are we caving? How much? Where where's our final offer? What's our line? I'm sure they've had some conversation like that in person. I'm sure they've discussed this for months. Um, you know, and, and I stand on three first round picks should be all you give up for Deshaun Watson. And if they if they don't want to do it for that, then keep it moving. Um, but the question is, it is, you know, is that gonna be enough to get it done? And you should move for that line. You shouldn't. I mean, we all know the mystery that surrounds Deshaun Watson. His cap hit next year is forty point four million dollars, yeah. and if he's not suspended, you're probably going to have to pay it again. And if he is suspended, you're not going to get three first round picks for him. So, do you want to sit there and hold on to him because you have this, you know? This negotiating stance that you need more than that. Like, if I'm Miami, I'm not budgeting for my offer. Right, and I think that's what they were doing. They were trying, trying to get it on the cheap. Meanwhile, and I don't know if the report is true from Pro Football Talk because that 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 site throw throws up so many things. You know what I mean? It just and hopes for a few of them to stick. Um, it just. I, I don't know if that's the truth, but I could see where Miami, if they're really trying to make this trade, they're trying to do it now and trying to tell Houston, go ahead, take your chance. But if he's guilty, you're not going to get anything in the offseason. So that's kind of the whole thing about, did you believe that story, by the way? I don't know if you read it on Pro Football Talk that that apparently they got a whiff that maybe he should, he should he's going to be settling. So they they backed off the table and said they wanted more. No, um, no, I did not read that. No, um, yeah. Well, apparently that's what that's what Pro Football Talk is reporting that they were close on a deal, and and then Houston got a whiff of apparently he's going to be settling soon uh, with the twenty two um, uh, lawsuits. 
So they they backed away from the table and 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 they wanted more for Watson at that point. I don't see my problem is I have a hard time believing that website because a lot of the stuff they throw out there does not end up happening. So that's the problem. They do get a couple things, but that's because you know you throw up enough crap on the wall. Uh, some of them is going to stick. Fed, they get fed by agents all the time, so right? Of course, it, 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 of course. it's but they've had such a bone boner for this Deshaun Watson story, and I understand why. Um, quarterbacks are clicks. Um, you're hitting two quarterback markets. You're hitting the Watson market, and you're hitting the Tua market and the Tua nons, as 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 my my friend Adam Beasley calls them. Um, and I mean, the Tua nons are a pretty strong, rabid base of of people and fans. They've been quiet after that Buffalo game. Do you know that his three worst performances of his career are against Buffalo? So is everybody else, Omar. Do you do the homework? <laughs> week one, week one, Big Ben, 18 of 32, 188 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Washington, Henneke, 212, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Texans, Mills, 87 yards, zero touchdowns, four interceptions. Mahomes, 272, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Tanny Kill, 216, zero touchdowns, one interception. Maybe they are title contenders. You, you figured that out now? I don't know. You figured I out now that the Bucks and the Bills are the best teams in the NFL? I still don't want to believe I mean, it. This, this is what I love about, uh, about our Dolphin Nation. Now you're going to pick on Tua like, well, he sucks against the Bills. Everybody sucks against the Bills. Even Mahomes sucks ass against the Bills. Everyone. It's not a Tua thing. The problem is the people that go up against the Tua Knights, they think they got, you know, a stiffy on it. And the people that have it against Tua also have a stiffy because they don't look at it objectively. They don't look at it like they tell me, well, the Jets guy threw for 400 yards. Well, guess what? They've got LaFleur as a coordinator, bro the brother of Matt. So obviously way better than the crap we have here. And they've got three linemen in Connor McGovern and the Vera guy that they drafted. The, the good thing, the, the lucky part is Becton's out, but they still have a better line. And la and yesterday, the North Carolina running back, the other guy that, that we weren't going to get, the other guy, he kicked ass yesterday. He had Michael Carter had 15 rushes, 77 yards, and a touchdown, nine receptions, 95 yards. We don't have a line or a back that can do that, but we're not objective with Tua. And you come out saying, well, he can't play against Buffalo. Nobody can play against Buffalo, dude. That's the problem that nobody ever sees, and they don't do their homework. Here's here's my and, – and, and as I say, I couch this by saying the same thing, and you know where, where I stand with Tua. I love Tua. But I'm at the point now where I know that he's going to be a dink and dunk quarterback. And if you do not have a quarterback – that can make every throw and attack every area of the field um, and can strike quickly, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day, and you got you to gotta hope that, you know, he doesn't make any mistakes or you got to give him a physical rushing attack and a, a brick wall of offensive line, and you got to work too hard. And so, so let me ask you something. You put Tua with Sean Payton. What do you think happens? Yeah, they, they're in the market for quarterback. Let's let's make it happen. And and they're they got cap troubles, so they can't acquire Watson, but they could acquire a guy that's still in his rookie contract. Hey, maybe it's a perfect storm. No, no, it is a perfect storm. That's my point to you. If I get Sean Payton to get Tua. Tua will be a pro bowler with Sean Payton because he'll know how to design the damn offense so the kid can have success. He'll give him an offensive line. He'll give him a running game. I think some guy named Alvin Kamara. I think I think that's the guy's name. I think he might be half decent, maybe. You know, he might be a mediocre average running back, but he's better than what we have here. You know what I'm saying? And so it's it's a whole different ball game if he goes to New Orleans 
and he has a guy that actually understands quarterbacks and can develop them. They I'm not. Nothing. I, I'm not. I'm not worried about wor worried about that or what can be. Um, I'm looking at it yards after. The, I'm looking at it from a philosophical standpoint. Um, is that the type of offense that I want to run where I want to work super hard to score points? I mean, there's a reason you're the second worst scoring team in the league. And it's not Tua's fault. I know that. It's, it's, it's everybody's fault. It's everybody. It's everybody. And last year, they were bailed out by Chan Gailey and Fitz because they were the experienced people. <laughs> now all you got is an experienced offensive coordinator, an experienced offensive line coach, an experienced quarterback, an experienced offensive line. I mean, everywhere is inexperienced. They got nobody to hang their hat on. They got nobody to lean on. There's no Brandon Albert on the line. You know what I mean? There's no Mike Pouncey on the line. There's no Chan Gailey put, setting everything up. There's no Fitz who has, you know, yesterday some guy, I don't know, some guy, I guess he was a big, uh, he loves the, the, the novels of Tom Clancy or whatever was on the thing. Well, Fitz could handle it better than two, and it's like, yeah, dude, Fitz for 17 years has been a backup in chaotic situations. He's used to what Miami was because that's what he's been his whole career. Wherever he's been, he's been the fill-in guy, the guy that comes in in the worst situations when they change coaches, whatever. That's all Fitz knows. So when Fitz got here, he can work in chaos. But, dude, it takes a long time in the NFL to learn how to be that. And, and we're not going to ask a kid like Tua or Herbert or any of these young cats to be in a chaotic situation and succeed. You can't do that, bro. I, just I, was thinking, I was thinking about it the other day. I was thinking about it yesterday, not even the other day, yesterday. Um, I don't even know what the score was, but I thought to myself, you know, Xavier Howard and, and Ryan Fitzpatrick are probably responsible for 90% of Brian Flores' wins. Take those two out of the equation. Just just those two. How many wins does Brian Flores have? Uh, I'm I'm no, I disagree with you because Van Ginkle was also on the money last year in several plays. There were different guys. Ogba I mean, had a lot. Did he, did he deliver wins? Yeah, he did. He actually didn't he like score and everything. I mean, the guy yeah. helped out in certain games. He was he was he had a knack last year for being at the right place at the right time for some game changing plays last year. But I would I, I I understand where you're going. OK, I understand where you're going. Hey, no, uh, Xavier Howard. He doesn't have a win this year. No, no. Ryan and Chan Gailey, and Chan Gailey, bro. You have to give Chang Gailey the credit yeah, because I, I, well, I you just look at the offense time. this year and look at the offense last year. I mean, it with is, the point for up to the Marino days. I mean, give me a break, dude. So it obviously, is sad. You, you know, you know, it's funny that the thing that he said that the reason why he hired Chang Gailey is because he coached to get him in for years, and no matter what you did to him, Chang Gailey had a counter, or Chang Gailey knew what to do to to attack it. Dude, it, he hired Chang Gailey because Chris Greer talked him into hiring Chang Gailey because it's Chris Greer that had the connection with him. Never heard that before. But anyway. Um, yeah, you, you know, whatever he says on the thing, that's fine. But, you know, he's not going to tell you his conversations with Chris Greer. I, behind I, the I, I had never heard that before. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Uh -huh. he, was, he was here with Chris Greer. That's why I'm saying there's a connection, you know. But he doesn't know him from Adam. Uh, Chris I, don't knows him. I don't think Chris Greer's been around him, far. has dealt with him. Uh, no. Flores is not. Flores doesn't know Chris him from Greer, the I don't think Chris Greer goes back that far. Uh, Chang Gailey of course was he here. Does. No, no Chang Gailey. He, he, was here, he was here in the Wanstead years, for sure. Uh, yeah. I, I'd have to. You're going to make me look this up now. Go, hold on one second. Uh, but they have a connection. Uh, I never heard that. Not disputing it. Never, but just never heard it. But go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's just uh, the situation is just so polluted at this point. So, and you know, everybody wants blood. So everybody wants to fire flow and Greer. Yeah. And it's, very, and it's very understandable why you want to fire everybody. And nobody can argue with anybody that wants to fire 
everybody because everybody deserves to get fired at this point. So I, I understand all of that. But that's probably not going to happen. So are we going to go through the same BS that we've gone through in the past? That he's coming back on the hot seat and now he has to scramble for coaches and they have to yeah. do desperation moves to try to hold on, hold on. save their asses. You're, you're, they overlap where he joined the Dolphins as a regional scout in 2000, which happened to be the year that Gailey was running the offense. As a, I mean, maybe, maybe they, they, they have a friendship as a regional scout. Like, come on, regional scout, you're like the bottom of the basement. Like, I know, but, but, I, but I, I saw him in the building during that time because I was a beat guy at that time. So I know he was there. I, I saw both guys during that time. That's what I'm saying. And they're both at the senior bowl together and all that stuff, you know, because all the scouts and coaches are together. So I'm just saying there is a crossover between those two that they know each other is what is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question, uh, yeah, you, if you're Brian Flores, you need a new – you at the minimum, you need a new offensive line coach. You probably need a new wide receiver coach. Um, I would look for a new defensive line coach because you're clearly not getting it done from a pass rush standpoint. And then you need a new offensive coordinator. That's four coaches on the hot seat. What you know? What kind of caliber of assistant can you hire? Uh, you, if, to me, it all starts with the offensive coordinator. I mean, if if they come back and they're doing the same old two step, you know, we're 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 wasting time, which we've we've always done. Here. Well, but that's, that's we've always done that. But the the problem is, oh, he's he's not going to get quality at those positions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I those don't coaches just, I aren't going to come here because they know he's he's on the hot seat. That's I problem. don't. I do not disagree with you. I do not disagree with you. However, I also know that Steve Ross is set in his ways about unless he's just absolutely fed up. And yes, this market wants blood. This market always wants blood. Always, yes, yes. Al always, always wants blood. Well, but um, listen, listen. I don't blame the Dolphin Nation, bro. It's twenty-five years of the same brutal cycle with I'm a different coach. And a different general manager, and and the results are all the same. My so, my, my I, thing is, you, I I you, I, you I, I don't blame do the all. torture fan base. I don't blame. My, them. my thing is, you got to do it all at one time. We've done two things. We haven't done two things during the Steve Ross tenure. We haven't reset the organization from the top, and and they let, did that. No, this is what they did. They just did that. No, they hired been, the guy, and he hired everybody else. They've just and they he's, reset. He's been here. I don't count that. I, I, I'm talking about a guy who's going to come in and and change everything, change everything. Like we got, we still got scouts that've been here since the 1990s. Like that that happens in every change. You you always keep people, Omar, because there are good people in every organization. Uh, Not everybody's bad. So the, the people that don't make the decisions doesn't mean they're bad people. They just don't make the decisions. I, I did not say very, that they, they are. Might be very good. We no, we've never done that. We've never done it. He he's a holdover, and that that's you know you you. Omar, had, when when, Jim, when Jimmy went to Dallas, he, he didn't get rid of of the personnel guy. Uh, what's his name? The uh, Brent, the guy's uh, so serious. Uh, Gil Brent. Gil yeah. Brent. He didn't get rid of Gil Brent, my brother. I don't care. He didn't get rid of several scouts in the Cowboys. He kept them because what care. you do is you go over their reports. And you see what they – they don't make decisions. It's the general manager that makes the decision. I, 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 There's I lots of people that have opinions. That doesn't mean that they're bad people, Omar. You have to then you have to then look at it and you I, say, I, okay, Gil Brand, I'm not going to get rid of Gil Brand. He's not the problem why the Cowboys were so terrible at that moment. So he I kept Gil Brand. And, if, and by the way, if he doesn't keep Gil Brand, he doesn't draft Troy Aikman. Big O, I don't care. I, I, listen, I, I listen. I give you solid substance no. of history no, no, that no. contradicts wait, wait, wait. everything you said, and I, you say I don't care. I, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm at the point where I mean, you know where I've been for the last couple of weeks. Like, you got to do something you haven't done. Other, you got to get off this hamster wheel, man. Somehow. No, but, but Omar, making good decisions has nothing to do with cleaning the entire house. Okay, How there are people, people that are people there that are, are good that are in, the house? 
in every corporation that you go to. Are they making over, good decisions with people that are in the house? You don't know that because there's only one guy making decisions. And, and that's, that's how Chris Flo. Greer got his job. And that's Flo. And that's how Chris no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. On the that. team. On the team. Not the I don't like that. I hate team. when you do that. That mm -mm. They're, they're, Chris Greer, I mean, Flo ain't in charge. Chris Greer is in charge. Flo is yes. not in charge. Chris yep. Greer is in charge. And, right. and he and, and and I'm starting to realize that the biggest screw up that Chris Greer made was hiring Brian Flores. Bro, he was a coach of the year candidate a year ago. Like yeah. Yeah. And, and and by the way, Dave Wanstead also won coach of the year, and so did Butch Davis in the NFL. And that and a and a glass of milk doesn't get you anything. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, the sun shines on every dog's ass every once in a while. Not coach of the year shine. A anyway, uh, listen, I'm making, I, I, I am at the point now, and it's not like we uh, didn't expect a Buffalo loss because we did expect a Buffalo loss. Uh, my issue is they look so bad at so many areas, and this is not an injury decimated team. This is, this is, this is not no, the they're just terrible. This they're is just not terrible. the Cleveland Browns. No, they're terrible. Or, they're, or Baltimore. They're, or Baltimore. Yeah, uh, no, let's not even put Baltimore in there because they're winning. Like no, no. It, but what I'm saying is they're injury riddled and they're winning. Yeah, I know. That's impressive. That's awesome. This is just a bad team. Yeah, and it's worse than he inherited. Hell, they're probably worse than the the than the tank team. Like it, it, it's yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. And, yes. and I, I and. How? Hey, this is worse than the one in fifteen Cam Cameron team. No, it's not. How do you like them apples? No, no, no. How do you like them apples? Do not accept that. Reject that. Oh, well, you can reject it all you want. Go through the roster. I'll take I, that I, roster. No, I, I know that roster intimately. I it's because it. it's got experience. That roster. No, so that roster. That, that roster. By the time they started losing games, that roster lost like twenty-four guys to injuries and whatever. No, nah, that 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 mm -mm. like that roster had no quarterback. Mm -mm. This one, this one can beat that roster. Now they might not be able to beat 2019, but they could beat that roster. God, this is bad, man. This is so bad. Like you, no linebacker. So, so tomorrow, who's on this? Who's gone from this roster? X, Devonte Parker. Tua, I mean, Jameis Winston got injured yesterday. Unfortunately, poor kid got carted off. They need a quarterback in New Orleans. Here, here's my thing about, about trading away players for draft picks. And keep in mind that, you know, I'm usually not opposed to that. But what are you going to do with those draft picks? Right, right. I, I get it. Like, it. like, like right are, we gonna, right. are we going to draft Austin Jackson and Noah Igbenogany? You right. know, even, even elf Christian Wilkins, like, uh, like, like, bro, this is this, the this, same this it. Like, I, 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 fun, I fundamentally, you know, and I, I keep thinking about that 2018 team that, that, um, that Gates, you know, the one that quit on Gates. At the end of the right. season, they were just mm -hmm. done with him. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, that team can, would kick the snot out of this team, you know. And how do you regress that bad? How do you go bad, that bad when you are – I mean, it was so – like, you really stuck it up this offseason. You're like, you really did a bad job. Like oh, yeah. colossally bad. Like yeah. yeah. And 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 I truly believe what a lot of people are thinking, and I agree with them, um, that th the fact that you cut all that experience from your roster on your coaching and on your in your roster, I think that's what really hurt the foundation of this team. And there just isn't enough experience around that people can lean on or experience that can lead. You know what I mean? And that's where I think, 
you know, Flo made a bad decision that he went younger with his roster and his coaching staff, and now he's paying the price because he's a young coach. He should be surrounded by veteran coaches. That's what I opened up with today on the show is that he needed to be surrounded by, by, by older coaches. So as a young head coach, he could then absorb all of that information and grow from it because he could get better in learning every phase of the game. By him having all this inexperience, it mm -hmm. just he doesn't have the foundation. I, 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 I wrote that have. two weeks ago. I wrote that the players said that, you know, the, the loss of veteran leadership in terms of flow needing a, a gray beard, wrote the players say loss of veteran leadership is what's really hurt oh, us. Players for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, and, and so uh, my question is, like, where do I go from where do I go now? Like, this is about lessons learned, like in this process. And now the new lesson is draft picks, trading with players for draft picks. Is it isn't the magic isn't the golden ticket like and especially when you got good established players who you know are good and can can win you games now you know do i want to trade x yeah i mean probably but well you're not going to be oh you're not a year away from a championship right you are not so but if you're two or three living, if you're two or three into this habit of trading away good players for draft picks that we come average NFL players his knee is a time bomb you and I know that you I I would get it if he didn't have a bad knee or maybe even the the domestic issue but with a bad knee and wanting money and you're probably the way it looks now you're several years away from a championship he's not going to be a part of that championship so dude you're, you're actually better off trading him away and playing the hell out of Noah to find out if he can play or learn. And if he can't learn, then you can move on. But you're probably better off that way because that way you can clear two roster spots or finally find out about another one of those roster spots. But X will not be here when you are good, so trade him now while he still has value and that knee hasn't given out again. That's just me. You're never going to win this way. Okay. You're not winning now, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's not the right way to build a team. Not, now, it, would I do it? Probably, but it's not the right way to build a team. And all this tanking and purging and trading away quality players for, you know. Well, flow, flow, flow and Minka. You know, what can I tell you? Guess he didn't want to play for Flo. You know, those were the signs, and and we didn't we didn't look at him enough. And by the way, you've been saying that he's an a hole for a while, and so apparently this a hole stuff has taken a toll on this team. And this is one of the problems because you know you would still have Minka here if maybe the coach was a little bit more flexible. I, I think about I don't know if I said it to you or somebody else. Um, Minka, yeah, Minka and Tua, the personalities are very similar. And it just ain't going to work. Oh, no. Oh, well, Tua's done. I mean, he's it's over here. You, he cannot go on. Over with here if you replace him. <laughs> well, well uh, no, it's – what do you the, mean, uh, flow? You mean if you replace no, uh, either or, either or, okay, okay, either, yes, either, I agree. either or, yes. like yes, sir. Yes, I, yes. one, I, I think it's unhealthy that we continue to assume that the Watson deal is going to go through because we don't know. We don't know. Of course, I agree. I agree. And, 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 I agree. But, and, but, but Tua, if I to look, there's no doubt in my mind, Lee Steinberg, the the day the season ends, the next morning, Chris Greer is going to get a call from Lee Steinberg. Why and would Lee you Steinberg? Wait? Why would right. you win? And Lee and, and Steinberg, if I'm, Lee Steinberg oh, hey, I'm hey, trying to get to it in New Orleans right now. It, well, yeah, true. But, but you know, it's going to be a little harder right now and all that. But at the end of the year, he's going to mother F everybody in that building. I'm talking about Lee Steinberg. And he's going to say, you guys are a disaster. You're ruining my client. I want to get him the hell out of there. You guys are incompetent as hell. We need to make something happen. 
I'm going to go public with this if it doesn't. But I need because I know what happened. So and Lee Steinberg will, you know, so I think Lee Steinberg is going to go off on these guys. And if I'm if Tua, he hasn't if he has, if already. you're you're right. And and if I'm Tua, there's no way that at the end of the year you're going to say, you know, I want to continue with these guys because they don't support you, bro. You're you're going to keep going to going home to the woman that's banging everybody in the neighborhood. No, dude, you're going to get the hell out of there eventually because you're you're not getting the love so they've not only is they may not end up getting it's not the watch every woman you. in the neighborhood it's a supermodel okay well whatever so it you so you sleep with hallie okay and, and then you come home huh and then, and then you, you come, come home because exactly. Hallie don't want to marry you yeah but i mean i do everything to just stay home with holly but whatever anyways that's just me uh but i'm just saying all of this in the end you may end up losing out on watson and Tua wants to get the hell out of here. It's that's what happens in infidelity, brother brother. You mess up your happy home. You don't end up with either one. Huh? You don't end up with either <laughs> one. They both find out about each other. <laughs> You're out. I mean, no, 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 no. Watson knew Watson knew Dolphins had a girl. Dolphins knew, Watson knew I, I'm talking Dolphins. about I'm talking about real life when you have the, oh. the the guy that gets caught with the in the in the love triangle and they both find out about each other and they're like, What don't, don't, what? You, lo don't you love the ones where they like link up and they talk about you and then they, they meet up together? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Man. oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that you got two women motivated. Oh yeah, your life is over, dude. Yeah, your life is over. Unless the woman knows that you're you're already in a, involved in the relationship, and then she's just a serial cheater, where there are women like that as well. Anyway, all right. So, give me a guess because that's what it is right now. Uh, who's off the roster tomorrow, or there's nobody off the roster tomorrow? Oh, only guess that I have is 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 I I think you do what it takes to get Watson because that's your as Dave Hyde put it, you get out of jail free card. And you buy yourself some time. You buy yourself a season. You don't and try to season. trade. You don't try to trade Parker for anything. Whatever you can get. Nobody, ain't, tra nobody, nobody ain't trading for Parker. Come on, bro. Nobody. Come on, you got to be able to get a sixth or a seventh rounder for him. Oh, come on! You wouldn't give up Jakeem Grant for fifth rounder. Now you want a sixth. No, but Jakeem Grant was the best returner in the history of the Miami Dolphins. Let's get that straight, young man. Devontae, Devontae Parker, Parker is is probably. The, Devontae Parker is the greatest injured receiver in Miami Dolphin history. Him and Yatil Green, it's like a really tight race. I, 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 I knew you were going to say Yatil Green's name. I knew Except, you but I got to give Parker credit because he fought through the injuries way more than Yatil and actually has produced way more than Yatil. I, I never knew to yesterday. I don't even, I never knew Devontae Parker was that good. Like, I watched him drag his body during practice. This Devontae week. Parker's Devontae Parker had superstar talent, bro. He's just never he is never open. That that, that he, yeah, no, that's it. He's done all those injuries took away all his speed because when he was coming out of Louisville, he still had the speed to take the top off the defense at his size. But once he's had all these injuries, like like any player, once they have injury after injury after injury, they're never the same player ever again. They hey, will leave he, the same, he looked, he run the pretty, same. He looked pretty damn good. For somebody who, you know, can bear it. Tells you know, how, that, that, tells you, that tells you how special he is. It's like watching Bernard King. And I don't know, you might be a little too young for this. I am not too young for Bernard King. Okay, Bernard King blew out his knee in a time when you would blow out your knee. And you're done. It was yeah. over. Yeah. There was no ACL repair. There was no, hey, let's go get a dead man's cadaver and let's put it on and you're ready to go. Let's go. They had not gotten to that point yet. And so they gave, they did a surgery for him, and he was able to come out with the year of, of his life. And he played out of his mind, and he could never do it again because he did it on balls. Is what he ended up doing it. You know what I mean? It's one of those deals, and that showed you that how good Bernard King was and how talented he was. That with a crippled knee, he went out there and balled out anyway. You know what I mean? Look at Dwayne Wade. For those final years where he changed his game and still was productive. And why? Because he's a freaking great player. So great players can adjust as their as their skills diminish. 
And that's what Devontae Parker is. You'll see the flashes because the kid was a special talent, man. Here, here's why you can't have a fire sale. Here's why you can't have a fire sale. Uh, team will absolutely quit on you. Not, not, not that guys aren't trying to get out of here. Um, but if you're just barely holding on right now, and, and think about it. It's about self-preservation at this point. Flo has got to get to the point where Flo can't finish with a three-win team, a four-win team. He's, he, you think you think they can get to four? Honestly, honestly, no. Okay, so then, so then trade X. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but Parker, it, it, you you can't get to four wins with dude. They won five his first year without X. So screw it, man. At this point, X, Devontae Parker are two pieces. There aren't a lot, actually, Omar. It, the, the, you can't have a fire sale because they're so young all over the place. Really, there's only a couple of pieces you can move. And my if, list, if is, I'm, if I'm my line, list is, is X, DV, uh, Devontae Parker, Jones, if you want to move the other corner because a, okay. a lot of money. Who the and then the only contract? young guy that you move is Tua. Because you already, you know, you already quit on him. Everybody, so you everybody's you, for sale. You're not, you if don't if want I'm him. going the fire sale route, everybody's for sale, Vigo. No, I, I get it, but I don't think everybody. there's a fire sale. Everybody not... is for no, sale. But that's, you, no, but 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 fire sale would be a whole bunch of veterans. They don't have enough to trade. It's just a couple of pieces that you would try to trade. That's it. That's what I would do. I'm just if, if I'm if I'm not doing that, but if I'm if I am doing that, everybody's for sale. You want Christian Wilkins? You want Emmanuel Agba? No. You want no. oh, well, well, Agba? You yes. Want, you want Jerome Baker? You want um, everybody? Holland is probably the only person that I don't see. If I'm gonna do it, if I'm gonna do it, Holland and Waddle are off the table. Everybody else can go. Don't matter who you are, Liam Eikenberg. Don't matter. If I'm gonna go that route, like it, you know, and there's no reason that you shouldn't go that route because like what are you building to right that's what that's my point that there's really nothing here at the moment so if you can move a couple of pieces the ones i talked about i, I wouldn't go to the extreme you're talking about i it, would only move a couple of people x i would definitely move if i can byron jones i definitely move if i can and Devonte parker i would definitely move if i can and if you really have quit on two, you're, you're, you're only going to move X for a look to for a team in a contender status who thinks that he right. could be in the finishing piece. That means you're trading X for a bottom of the first round pick, like Cowboys. They got they got a great cornerback. Well, they're pretty good. They they got well, but you can put them on the opposite side of the kid. They've been trying to trade him to the Cowboys for two years, bro. It, it ain't gonna happen. Like like. Mm -mm. Uh, cowboy, Cowboys. Anyway, let me not even get into that. I'm I'm actually really impressed with the Cowboys, by the way. Yeah, Super no. If, if if like wow. they've been trying to trade them to the Cowboys for two years, like so, maybe I don't know. I don't care at this. I point. mean, this, you could the Saints also, but the problem is now the Saints they got, have they have no need. assets, and they're no, not no, even but, the playoff contender, and they have a bigger need now at quarterback. <laughs> Actually, so they're not going anywhere without a quarterback. So that's why the Tua thing. If you at this point, I'm trading Tua for what I got for what I gave up for Josh Rosen and keeping it moving. If right. I get Watson, if, yeah, yeah, you can probably get a, a second and a fifth. That makes a lot of sense. I think New Orleans would give you a second and a fifth for him. probably maybe. I know okay. Sean Payne will make him a stud. So that's just me. But what can I tell you? Uh, follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly. And more importantly, catch him at the South Florida Sun Sentinel, as always, doing excellent work covering the Miami Dolphins. And, of course, you can catch him here several times a week with the EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report. Oh, thank you, as always, my friend. All we'll right, catch him on Friday and talk about the trades. <laughs> Later. All right, let's take a quick break. Hour number two is coming up. That's our EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report. This is the Big O Show. This 
is the big old show.